Tyler Goodspeed. Tyler, good morning. It's great to have you back. Good morning. Good to be with you. A lot of things uh, at work in the quarter, obviously, that really paid off residential uh, manufacturing consumption. I guess the question for our viewers is how much momentum do you see going into Q4? Can it be positive and does it need stimulus to make that happen? Well, Carl, we were definitely encouraged by the numbers that came out this morning. As you noted, this was the, the biggest increase in U.S. history by a factor of two. And, and just to put this in perspective, back in, in March and April, most forecasters were projecting a, a Q4 over Q4 decline of 8% or more. So we have already paired the, that output loss by more than half. And with a strong fourth quarter, we would be further pairing that by as much as two-thirds. In terms of strength moving into the fourth quarter, I think we're definitely eyeing inventory investment. Uh, the, the change in the change in private inventories uh, suggests that, that there should be inventory rebuilding uh, moving into the fourth quarter. We do continue to see strength in housing markets and also in consumer spending, the latter of which is, of course, 70 percent of the U.S. economy. So I think we are eyeing continued momentum, uh, albeit at a slower pace, heading into the fourth quarter. Right. Um, you mentioned uh, housing. Does any of the uh, negative surprises this week on either new homes or today uh, existing homes give you pause that whether it's supply or uh, simply uh, difficulty finding a home that some people can afford at this point, uh, does that, is that a liability potentially for Q4 GDP? When we're looking at the housing data, we are continuing to see strength, particularly in response to record low mortgage rates. And also uh, following the unprecedented fiscal response back in March and April, which I think is, is, was a major factor in attenuating this adverse shock that hit the U.S. economy earlier this year. Um, mind you, uh, as I said, back, back, back in March and, and April, people were projecting a, an annual decline of 8 percent. As recently as July, the Congressional Budget Office, the nonpartisan Congressional Budget Office, was projecting Q3 growth of just 17 percent. And, and an average unemployment rate during the third quarter of 14.1%. And instead, we had 33.1% growth in the economy, and the unemployment rate finished out the third quarter at 7.9%. Uh, but nonetheless, the, the, the president and this administration is very much committed to further legislation to continue to support this recovery and facilitate a return to full employment as quickly as possible. And that's why we, we remain committed to reloading the Paycheck Protection Program, to expanding an employee retention tax credit. These measures would help to ensure a robust labor market recovery. And in addition, we would support a second round of economic payments, economic impact payments to households to support consumer spending heading into the fourth quarter, and also to make sure that uh, we have continued strength in housing markets. Here, uh, putting stimulus aside, we've heard a lot about President Trump's economic record while he was in office. We haven't heard as much about his economic plan if he gets reelected to that office. Axios pointing out uh, that he doesn't have a second term economic plan on his website, which they found to be unique. Uh, what is his plan? Uh, should we expect more status quo or is there something else that we can expect over the next four years if he's reelected? Well, certainly one, we, one can expect a continuation of an expansion of uh, the remarkable reforms that we've implemented over the past three years, including the deregulatory agenda, unleashing American energy independence, and also tax reform that disproportionately benefited the lower end of the wage, income, and wealth distributions. I think heading into a second term, we would be eyeing making permanent all of the tax provisions of the 2017 tax legislation that are presently scheduled to expire. That includes what we did with, in terms of almost doubling the standard deduction as well as marginal rate reductions, expanding the child tax credit, uh, and also the, the full expensing of equipment investment, which we would like to expand upon. And, and in addition to that, the president is very committed to a middle class tax cut. And we have been working at a great length here in, in the White House on putting some details on that in terms of maybe take further expanding uh, standard deduction, additional rate reductions and consolidation in order to deliver a targeted middle class tax cut that would further reduce effective marginal tax rates uh, across that, that range of the income distribution. And further on, on top of that, we, we are eyeing measures uh, to further incentivize the reshoring of, of manufacturing production 
from from particularly the People's Republic of China, and we are also working on details for for further infrastructure investment. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.